So we've got a quadratic equation, and they've given us a few tasks for this quadratic. Uh, where a graph crosses the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept, and the graph of any y-intercept function is found where you uh, evaluate the function for where x equals 0. Because, look, this is a, if this is a, where a function crosses, oh gosh, this x right here in the center, uh, it doesn't matter if it's up there or if it's down here. Anywhere where it crosses the y-axis, it's where x equals 0. So you always find the y-intercept by plugging 0 in for x. And if you plug in 0 like I did up here in red, you get out 9. So the y-intercept, where it's going to cross the y-axis, is at 9. So part B, the axis of symmetry. Uh, we have a quadratic function that we're dealing with. So quadratics either make some sort of u-shape, a parabola, or an n-shape, that type of parabola. Uh, the axis of symmetry is always the line that's right in the middle, the vertical line, where if it was a piece of paper, you could fold it on that vertical line and it would make the same thing. It's symmetrical on both sides. So the axis of symmetry is found where the x-coordinate of the vertex is. We have a little formula for that. x equals negative b over 2a. That's how you find the axis of symmetry. So uh, just, to, just so we're on the same page, a is always the coefficient of the x-squared b is the number that's a coefficient of just x, and c is the number that doesn't have x attached to it. So we have negative 2 for a, 3 for b, and then 9 for c, but we don't need c in this formula. So I plugged in my a and my b into the formula, and it gives us negative 3 over negative 4, so positive 3 fourths. That's actually the, the formula for the axis of symmetry, because at x equals 3 fourths, it's... Uh, that's where the graph starts uh, changing directions. So actually, when you find the axis of symmetry, you found the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's 3 fourths. Um, so this, the part C is the same answer for part B. Um, so the next step, uh, making a table of values that include the vertex. Uh, table of values can help us graph. Um, what we do with the table of values is you plug in a number for x and see what it gives you for y. You could do it vice versa, too, but we're looking for pairs. Uh, ordered pairs. That way we can uh, graph points and we can get an idea of what the graph is going to look like. So they want us to use uh, table values that includes the vertex, so I need to plug in 3 fourths in for x. So I'm plugging 3 fourths, oops, that's a 2, uh, plugging 3 fourths in for x. And then I've got to just simplify that. Uh, if you're allowed to use a calculator, that might be a good idea, but uh, 3 fourths squared gives you 9 sixteenths. And then you get plus 9 over uh, 4 plus 9. And so when you do your fraction of arithmetic out here, the negative 2 can cross simplify and make 8 on the bottom. So you get negative 9 over 8 plus 18 over 8 plus, plus uh, 72 over 8. So final answer uh, for y is 81 over 8, which is roughly 10.125. So the vertex is 3 fourths, or uh, 80, and then 81 over 8. Uh, kind of hard to graph because those are fractions, but if you convert those to decimals, it makes it easier. So we want a table of values. We uh, can't graph a graph with just one point. Plug in some more numbers. And we already plugged in a 0 up there to find the y-intercept. Uh, y-intercept we found was 9. So let's try to get some nice and easy points. If you plug in x equals 1 into this uh, this equation, you got to do 1 squared first, because x ones come first. 1 squared is 1, 1 times negative 2 gives you negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 gives you 1, 1 plus 9 gives you 10. And then if we plug in a negative 1, because we want to check all the sides, uh, and again, this, by sides we should refer to the axis of symmetry. 3 fourths is where it changes direction, so you should pick some points to the right of 3 fourths, like this one, you should pick some points to the left, like that one. Uh, so yeah, if we plug in negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared gives you positive 1, so it gives you a negative 2 plus a negative 3 makes it negative 5, and negative 5 plus 9 gives us 4. If you plug in a 3, you actually get out uh, 0. If you plug negative 2 in here, uh, you get out negative 5. So that's probably enough points for our graph. Uh, we'll want to label the important pieces. Uh, but just to make some dots at 0, we're all the way up at 9. When we're at x equals 1, we're at y equals 10. When we're at x equals negative 1, we're at y equals 4. At 3, we have a uh, y coordinate of 0, and at negative 2, we're at negative 5, so somewhere down there. 
So we get an idea of what the graph's gonna look like. Um, it's making that end shape like we expect it would. Uh, and then it's gonna peak, we said, at x is three, four. So I'm gonna go a little bit above that point and then come back down. And then just for our viewer, we'll wanna label um, the vertex because that's usually the most interesting point of a quadratic. So there's our table and there's our graph.